Faninder sir would have been a network security professional and his master's degree in science or a professional uh, percussionist he is a uh, passionate about. When he received a life threat letter and could not find a professional to help him identify the letter's author, he decided to learn handwriting identification. As many as questions in, in their books, mentioned that there are no university level course offered in forensics documents. He found it challenging to start his learning under one of the senior experts in the field of disputed documents. In the process of enhancing the skills, he completed on uh, completed the course on forensic document examination from American Institute of Applied Sciences, USA. And he feels proud that it's being guided personally by international handwriting expert, Ms. Catherine Copenhagen, a certified document examiner, USA, and petitive author in the field of question document. Ms. Deborah Dunlap, forensic document examiner of Liberty Investigative Services, Ottawa, Canada, in his mentor who helped him in a very in a every step of uh, upgradation. Uh, not only this, sir has been a very immense knowledge and a very deep knowledge regarding the psychological concepts. And uh, there are numerous cases handled by sir uh, with this say, with with covering the psychological concepts behind the crime or anything. So, uh, sir, now the session is over to you. Uh, Fine. Thanks for the uh, the introduction about me, Akritika. Participants, uh, I I I am thankful for the host who have uh, invited me to be a speaker here, in spite of me not coming from the professional category of uh, you know communication experts. However. Uh, there, there, there are a few, uh, you know, the prospects, there are a few concepts which I would like to share as a professional in the field of forensics, but how, and also in the capacity of the uh, head of an organization of how we look at the, you know, the communication, how we communicate between different corporates, how do we expect the communication is to be uh, when it comes to the intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships. So however, when we are now discussing about uh, the communication, when, when, you, when somebody asks me, what is the need of a communication? For any relationship, it could be a business relationship or a personal relationship. Uh, in addition to whatever the uh, question and answers we discussed in the previous session uh, by our honorable speaker. So did the communication questions arise uh, with respect to the personal as well as the professional uh, you know, communication aspects. So ultimately, the communication is very, very important for the intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships. And uh, one thing I would like to add on here, the reason where everybody here are today in this session is only because of effective communication, which was made by SIFS and team SIFS. Okay, so the, without the proper communication, I believe nobody would have been here. So the, probably now you understand what are all the essentials of a effective communication, which includes colors in communication, which includes different prospects in communication, which includes, okay, which has to be communicated to you the purpose and the result of the particular uh, agenda of the uh, session. So when this kind of proper communication is made, so this results in people understanding the purpose of your communication and those people who understood your communication or I'll also discuss about people who did not understood your communication also could have been in the session to understand why was the communication was made. Okay, see, the, the purpose of the communication is to convey something to someone and uh, let me now share my, my screen to discuss about uh, uh, the concepts here. Uh, Krizika, can you please confirm if my screen is now visible to the participants? Yes, ma'am. It's oh yes, sir. It's visible. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Communication. See, when when uh, when we're discussing about 
why is that I am unable to communicate? Why is that people are always taking me wrong? You have to understand there are two dimensions of your communication. One is the uh, receiver's perspective. One is the transmitter's perspective. So, uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, wrong. but uh, the screen uh, it shows that it's loading. Can you just uh, switch it on a full mode if it's possible? One moment. Is it good now? Uh, so it's in the presenter's view. Now? Yes, sir. It's perfectly fine now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the for, for any communication, there's always uh, two perspectives. One is the receiver's perspective and transmitter's perspective. But when it comes to you, okay, if, if in case you're getting onto any communication, you're also involved in both the aspects. Sometimes you are transmitting, sometimes you are receiving. It is always an issue, okay, from, from our side or the first party who is the me, that we expect how people should be understanding. If in case you say something, you expect the other person to understand your actual purpose of communication, even though you did not communicate the way it has to be communicated. So whenever we feel that the other person is trying to get me wrong, we have to acknowledge that it is not the problem of the other person, but there's a good contribution from our side that we have failed to communicate in a sense that the other person can get the same meaning of what I communicated. So with this, with this benchmark, I'm going to present my topics with a employee employer's perspective and the workplace related communication techniques because i believe most of you are students here and uh, the personal communication would definitely arise uh, on, on a different uh, level of your life but my involvement today i'd like to specifically focus on the uh, business perspectives how your communication should be or how the uh, receiving communication should be understood so for success in communication, when you want to consider, I have successfully communicated something that has again two verticals. One is that you have tried convincing the other person, which would definitely get a long-term effect. Okay, because uh, you are successful in communicating what you wanted to communicate, and that serves the purpose, and that will definitely have a long-term effect of your communication. Otherwise, you still be calling it as a success because you confuse the person right now and you actually won the situation and which is definitely going to be of a short term significance. Convincing and confusing, both can give you a success. But what success are you currently looking for actually matters, okay, your uh, definition of success because communication would definitely sometimes confuse, sometimes convince us. So it again depends on both the prospects receivers and transmitters perspectives. Now, coming to the cautious words of a, a listening prospects. So I'm going to give you a, a list of such, uh, you know, uh, terminologies, which we expect that to be uh, in the communication. First of all, your communication has to be concrete. Let me ask uh, uh, a, 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 the participants here, how many of you want to be successful in life? Please raise your hands on the screen. There is a button on the screen, raise hand. Please let me know if you want to be successful in life. Thank you. <clears throat> the first participant to raise the hand was Yogita. Yogita, can you please unmute your microphone and tell me, how do you want to define success? Yogita? Uh, can the host allow the participant, uh, Yogita, to unmute? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yogita? Okay. Saurav? Saurav Singh? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. You want to Thank be successful? You, sir. Yes, sir. I want to be successful. Thank you Please for giving me. what is success according to you. 
according to uh, I, according to me i would like to say that success is uh, from my opinion uh, i i want to be like uh, in a bell life lifestyle and i can contribute towards the society so that so they they can also improve their lifestyles and living of a standard according to me what is what according to you is uh, improved lifestyle improved lifestyle uh, that means uh, like Uh, whatever you want you can get it from your own uh, you don't have to go to someone for asking something like uh, if you want to want to study higher so you can afford your studies uh, you don't have to go to institutes like uh, for loan and all these purposes uh, whatever you want you can get from your own do you mean you are referring to financial stability and financial independence yes sir So instead of giving such a long answer, you would have termed yes. it as financial independence. Am I right? Yes. But the financial independence is alone success, according to you? No, sir. At a point of time when you, uh, 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 this is my opinion. Uh, at a point of time when you will financially in- independent, there will be lot of things that you have to. Work on. No, no, come, come in. Keeping all those things apart, what is success according to you? First point is financial independence. Yes, sir. What is there any other point which you want to add on? For me, not any. All right. Uh, Garwan Douglas. Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, do you want to be rich? Honestly sir no I would not want to be rich I would want to be comfortable You you want to be comfortable right Yes I What want to be in a position According to you In in my opinion comfortable means to be able to um provide for my family and um in essence uh be able to um impact um the people in 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 my community as well because um where where I'm from it's a it's a really poor community and so being able to help and assist them and um more importantly my family um that's important to me all right so according to you comfortness is what you are calling it as richness or the successful in your life however my purpose of asking these questions to the participants is that it's a matter of fact that every one of us will uh, have a lot of things which we commit ourselves on a everyday basis and our communication is not so very concrete concrete in the sense it is not supported by factual material which includes figures and the complete concrete plan see everybody pray to the god oh god keep me happy god tries his best to keep you happy but since that we have never defined what happiness means whatever god gives us we still feel oh my god i am still unhappy but the moment you define uh, happiness according to me is this where i earn x amount every month after all the expenses i start saving x i mean uh, y amount every month that is happiness according to me if you If unless and otherwise if you define this whatever god keeps giving you you still blame the god oh god you are not giving me happiness so like this the purpose of the communication which should be concrete is that we should support by actual and factual figures and proper concrete plan without this your communication will be so abstract that you feel i have communicated but the other person might have a chance receiver's perspective might have a issue they would not have understood what you tried to communicate the first essential factor here is it being very concrete next coherent coherent communication is also referred as the logical communication and when you want to propose something to someone in the in the interest of convincing people see people are of two different categories category number 1 logical category number 2 emotional okay 
when when you look at different tv ads and you know uh, uh, other uh, print ads there's always two extreme levels of communication or uh, attempts which is made for the purpose of uh, uh, the selling the ads one category of ads talks about logic for yamaha super bike which has a uh, four stroke gear with uh, engine capacity so on so so everything they discuss which is very logical and another advertisement will show that okay you buy this bike when you start when you stop in the traffic signal you get a boy or a girl coming on to your bike that's emotional it also happens with the com plan horlicks you drink horlicks you score uh, you know good in your exam it that doesn't have any logical sense but it has some emotional sense but for the purpose of effective communication when it comes to workplace and you know uh, when it comes to career it is very essential that it should be supported by logical well planned and sequential manner of communication so there should be a flow in the communication it should not be uh, see when, when you uh, look at uh, the movies okay people are so connected to the movies see you you categorize the movie as good screenplay and bad screenplay good screenplay is something like you know the the whole movie keeps you engaged okay you can relate to every every bit of the frame of the entire movie so till the last scene is shown to you you can relate why this scene was shown in the beginning uh, and what it connects to the last scene so in your communication this is what is very very important when you propose a plan when you propose a project okay so that requires the logical and sequential manner of communication which talks about the numbers if i do this what's going to happen and what will be the effect of this particular plan on different category of people it should also talk about the uh, if if there is a requirement to talk about the financial implications as well that's how the uh, presentations are made in the corporate levels so why we are discussing why we are limiting the communication only for the corporates is because corporates has some business to be done or right, but which doesn't stop us to adopt the same thing in our everyday life when this becomes our standard of communication we can expect everyone around us to understand our communication the way we want to communicate and it is the preparation required from the transmitter's point of view so that next we discuss about the receiver's communication point of view first is the responsibility from the transmitter's point of view for which there should be a good connection with the main topic and the flow should be consistent throughout your presentation throughout your uh, communication the purpose of co your communication should always be underlined you should know why you are communicating this to someone you you uh, there are there are many people who are here who could be of teenagers you would have definitely proposed someone in your life and if in case the person rejects you and you have 100 reasons to convince the person why only that person you have fallen for all right see i have been following with you since the day one i followed your facebook posts i followed your instagram and the first person to like your facebook post so you are trying to give your justification for convincing that person relate the same thing to your career okay if in case you want to convince a person there should be all these logical reasonings why that person should rely upon your statement why that such person should be relying upon your proposal so for which your facts your numberings your flow of your presentation is very very important as a transmitter's point of view next the commitment commitment also is seen in one's statement and the way you communicate to someone can definitely make people understand how committed you are how confident you are about your communication and if you if you if you say something which you are not committed or if you are not confident the other person definitely can understand oh my god he doesn't mean what he said look kritika i'll come to delhi and i'll directly face you and i'll scold you in front of everyone if i say this nobody relies upon me kritika i am going to come to delhi i am i am going to scold you in front of everyone right 
so this tone of communication always has a meaning matlab when you are really committed about your word when you are really confident about what you are trying to say it actually has an impact on the receiver and the purpose of a communication itself is to have an impact on the receiver side if that receiver is not impacted your communication is not complete your communication is not effective is what you are going to understand and for all the people who know about uh, or uh, ncc or military crops okay you you have heard people who are actually giving the command in the field okay how do they give the command in the field loud and clear all right and there there are commanders in the army and you know the field officers who doesn't require a mic their their voice is so loud and clear that every person in every corner will hear his command so that kind of voice when i say voice it's not the sound i'm talking about the confidence is what is required so that every bit of receiver will understand your purpose of communication so ultimately what it requires is that simply measures one dedication and degree to which one communicates surety in the argument okay so this also we recommend for every advocate when advocate is bringing in a you know a, some kind of argument before the court when he himself is not sure about what he is trying to argue how do you expect the judge to be convinced about your argument all right when you yourself are not committed to your thoughts your decision that doesn't have any impact on the receiver okay so when when they, when parents are scolding you or parents scold us you would say ha papa kal se kar lunga there is a commitment papa mai kal se karunga so there is a difference in your everyday life communication and you you yourself would have uh, you know uh, uh, understood from my explanation so far as to what you have said and to how much you are committed about those words so this doesn't require any much uh, you know uh, explanation however what i want to show you is that the words of commitment especially for a receiver's perspective okay suppose uh, i'm going to ask uh, uh, one of the participant here uh, shubra Shubhra, can you please unmute your microphone? Shubhra, okay. Anjali, Anjali, Shubhra. okay let me ask the host herself okay kritika yes sir kritika see next week okay i am uh, planning to celebrate uh, the pongal festival which is very famous in south india so i am requesting you to be a part of the celebration here in bangalore okay in this covid time i'll make all the arrangements for your travel can you please come Sure, I would love to see other culture and other tradition, and uh, I think it's going to be. I mean, I really want to see other cultural festivals also. So yes, why not? Okay, this statement of Kritika shows that she is not giving me a commitment to come here. She only expressed her interest, but not to come to the session which I am inviting her to be. Okay, so the words of commitment is like this: I will come. i shall come i shall definitely be a part of it okay otherwise when you invite someone see people would have invited many people for their birthday parties you know family functions or other uh, occasions people would say i i'll try to come they only try and they never come okay and uh, uh kritika can, yes, can you try can you try holding your ear like this no no i ask you to try not to do it oh yeah of course it has it, it make difference here yeah. right which means doing is more easier than trying okay. yes you can't try doing something you have to do it so the moment you hear the words i can do it which also means you cannot do it i'll try coming 
which also means I might not even come. All right. So when people say this word, I try. Don't take them seriously. Same thing happens in the communication in the corporates, which I definitely, uh, you know, uh, how I understand from the communication from other people. When they say, I'll try, that means I don't take them 100% confident of doing it. When they say, I will do it, yes, there is a commitment. I shall do it, there is a commitment. You may do it or you may not do it. You can do it, you cannot do it. So these are the words which will help you to stay committed to yourself. I will go to Mount Everest one day. That is your commitment. Okay, when you write something with your, see, uh, in different, different practices, there are people who recommend you, the life, life coaches, they recommend you to write the motivational statements. If you look at any kind of motivational statements, it is first party and it is having that words which will definitely inspire you to do something with you, uh, write something or you read something. Okay, that inspiration comes from the confidence of your communication. Okay, so that's why any authors, any big, big people whose quotes we use today, they all have this word. It will have, it shall have, it doesn't have any words which would say it can, it try, it might. Those words are never used in any kind of motivational statements. All right, so for this, the words which you use is very, very important. And let always be the words of commitment is used to be used in your communication. Next. Consistency. Consistency also should be understood, uh, you know, with, with the receiver's perspective. Why are you trying to be consistent with your communication? This consistency also has different parameters. One is the tone, voice, content. Okay, everything has a, uh, uh, everything are different parameters for you to be consistent about your communication. So choice of words. Definitely matters. The consistency, you might try putting the same idea in different senses, but the ultimate meaning should be consistent. Okay? You should, the words should not leave your team confused, which means when you communicate, the first thing what I discussed was to be very precise and to be very having the same meaning. When you communicate something, it, is, it, gives, it only gives you this one meaning, okay? It is just like, I'm, I'm taking the weird example, but it is a best example. I am pregnant, okay? Is there a partial pregnancy or full pregnancy? No. It only has one meaning. I'm pregnant. That's the end of it. So, when, when I'm just giving an instance, but there are different instances in your life which might require such kind of single meaning words, single meaning communications, okay? But this consistency refers to you saying something in different context, different way of communication, but still the end result should be achieved, should be the same. Which should also include diplomacy skills in this. When the other person is unable to understand the way you're communicating, you definitely will change the way you're trying to communicate, okay? Suppose I am communicating, uh, one of the agenda for this workshop was to discuss about how the male communicate and how the females communicate, all right? See, the male often use proper nouns, first party. The females often use, you know, abstract nouns or common nouns, okay? So, see, it's not that I'm biased, but I'm just giving you the uh, results which are which are published after several years of research, which is published papers, and I'm talking to you about the results what they have achieved. So it is not the biasing, but it is a fact. Suppose if I want to guide a male uh, 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 address to reach a particular place, boss, you get on from the metro station. Okay, after uh, you get on from the metro station, around 300 meters in the direction of north. Okay, you will find a, a bar, a liquor shop. If you take a right turn over there, the third building is the place which you're searching for. But if I say the same thing to a female, it is not convenient for her to understand. Rather, I'll have to give her a different level of understanding. Madam, when you get on the particular bus, 
on your left side or you have to find for a beauty parlor over there okay the place where you find the beauty parlor okay take the same route you will find some juice junction okay and opposite to that is your location so i am i am guiding both the people to the same destination but the way i am communicating to one person and the way i am communicating to other person because of the diplomacy requirement because this person knows the liquor shop there this person knows the beauty parlor if i say uh, a male about the beauty parlor that is something which they don't actually get attracted towards i can talk about some uh, vehicle showroom some garage okay something like that the male can actually relate to but for a female they have a different level of understanding so ultimately what is important is that consistency in your approach so that the same communication is you know uh, understood by the receiver and there is no room for repetition try to use short sentences and short words the example which i gave just before this okay where uh, uh, one of the participant uh, explained what is happiness or uh, you know what is successful it, it was answer was just financial independence and instead of mentioning such words when we tried giving a lot of explanation some people does not understand this okay and such words financial independence for example does not have any further explanation financial independence as a dictionary meaning is only one meaning all right so i am just giving you an example from the same session but consistency is achieved by the end result completeness completeness uh is like uh, giving or issuing a blank check how many of you have a practice of issuing a blank check you do, you don't prefer to give a blank check when you don't prefer to give a blank check you not also prefer to leave any communication without completing it it means as a english grammar is concerned the sentence should have the purpose of communication and it should end with a full stop not with a comma and it should not be left to other person to add whatever they want it cannot happen like that all right so never leave your sentences incomplete okay and each message should have a logical conclusion and people shouldn't be left wondering if there is more to come it happens in many of the movies you know when we watch a movie the movie is completed but you are not uh, are satisfied that the movie got completed just like bahubali part 1 are if if nobody would have said there is a part 2 you would not had felt that the movie is complete isn't it when you expect this from the movies so definitely as a receiver's point of view see movie you are receiving it and when you find the movie is not complete because they did not give a proper and logical conclusion you are actually blaming the movie and if you do not communicate and complete your communication the same thing happens for the receiver they actually don't understand your communication uh, uh, intention and your whole message is not received by them for this reason there is a good scope of misunderstanding okay next it's very very important that the way you treat and the way you uh, you know uh, uh, use the words even when you are very 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 angry on them it really makes a difference because uh, even since our olden days it's been always said chanakya or any other you know akbar birbal stories it's always been said to understand the person his real intentions his anger the status of his anger communicate what kind of person is he when the person is very angry when you talk to the person that actually shows what is the person's actual personality and in such situation the argument should make other person respectful see why do you argue it's because of some kind of disagreement all right so disagreement should not result in breaking your relationships all right 
the purpose of your disagreement is only the uh, situation that your thoughts and the other person's thoughts are not matching. Neither he can disrespect you nor you can disrespect the other person. For this reason, the argument that you make should be giving the respect to the other person. The try the best, try your best that in your communication, you are honest, respectful, and polite. You cannot come and say, hey, because he scolded me, I scold him. No. Here we may have to use the Gandhi Tattva. Even if he scolds you to a larger extent, to whatever the limit you can, you are expected to be honest, respectful, and polite. But people might ask me, sir, what happens if they keep on abusing us, if they keep on arguing without giving me the respect? Nobody says that you lose your uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a temper and revert back to him. It is a recommended process. Change the sequence. Leave that place. When you are arguing and not getting that respect, you can never get the respect after you are arguing. All right? Because you are not getting that respect, you are arguing, you can never get that respect. So the best solution for this is just take leave from that particular situation or just bring an end for the argument. All right, that is what is recommended procedure. Stay with proper care and it will be perfectly effective and important. Offensive words can put people, put off people. So once you lose that rapport, once you lose that communication, you can never get back because there are few people who don't forget anything. Hey, you told me that that day. I'll never forget. I'll never forgive. Okay, you might ask them hundreds, hundred times sorry. But still, they won't forget. They won't forgive. Situations are like that. So, for this reason, once you speak and once the offensive words are used, it can never be taken back. So, it might happen in your personal relationships also, but it's for any communication, offensive words can put people off. And even if you're so disappointed, even if you're so uh, you know, uh, 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 angry towards the person, the best way is, can you please shut up? Okay, if, even if you want to say the person to shut up, you might have to use the word, can you please shut up? So the person does not feel, oh my God, he's actually being offensive about me. Please will definitely make him a bit relaxed, then you say shut up. Okay, so the, the words what you use definitely makes sense. Uh, I, I definitely uh, have an impact about how you can expect a reward from the other person. Madam mentioned before this uh, session, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, you try showing the respect, you get the respect back. That's what it means. When you ask me, what are the cardinal measures? Okay, there are a few which I uh, uh, want to suggest or recommend for practice or uh, the good communication skills. See, from active participation in the communication, the first thing is you have to be a good listener. You being a good listener is the key for effective communication. And you don't listen to the person what he's trying to communicate. You actually lose the whole purpose of communication. And the only reason why every one of you are so disappointed and so frustrated about the online classes is because of lack of recommended communication skills. Because when we say about recommended communication, it has audio, visual, and you're experiencing the session. Now that everything is being online, you don't see that your teacher right in front of you, you don't see her moving around the class, you don't see your friend sitting next to you. So this actually has a, a, a very bad impact on your learning methodology. You have been in the same culture since several years, and suddenly since there is a change, you're trying to get them to uh, adopt to the given change. So for you to be an effective communicator, first thing is to have the eye contact with the speaker. You would have heard the song. Right? Because love starts from the eyesight. You all believe in that. If such is the case, you have to believe that the eye can definitely establish a very good communication with the other person. Which means the you have to maintain the eye contact with the other person. And there are different degrees of eye, uh, eye contacts. When you're in the business, you have a different level of eye contact. The way you co communicate 
uh, with the eye contact to your parents is not the same as you communicate the same thing to your friends. Okay, so when you know the purpose of this communication, be it in any kind of hierarchy procedures, okay, you know how much to maintain your eye contact. I, I, I see most of you being students, you cannot maintain 100% eye contact with your teachers or principal. Why? Because in our culture, uh, looking at eye to eye is not a respectful gesture. Correct? So for that, we actually bow our head and look down when other person is communicating. This is also culture specific. And there, in business culture, it is always recommended you have to look, you have to speak eye to eye. Okay, so for this, eye contact is very, very important. And one of the reasons why people are not able to enjoy the learning skills today is that you are unable to maintain the eye contact. There is no eye, you're focusing the camera. All right, so other person, when they're physically present, you maintain the eye contact. Next, respond appropriately. Okay, when you are in the classroom, when teacher is teaching you something, you can't sit like a robot. All right. You definitely have to respond non-verbally. Sometimes people will say, mm, mm. right, when you're sending a story to some friend on the phone call, you expect them to be responding. Are you dead? Respond, no. You expect this communication. So that responding appropriately is also one of the very effective communication requirement. No interruptions. See, in, in, in the online classes, okay, these days, uh, because most of the students have not experienced uh, such a training or such a session, people, they actually, being in the classroom, it's very easy for them to interrupt the whole communication and talk whatever they want. But in the online, the culture is slightly different. If you really want to interrupt, there is a way how you can interrupt. And that is also very formal way of communicating. Okay, and, and one of the reason where in today's session, the host has not given the permission for every participant to unmute is also to maintain the same decorum. All right, but when you are in the classroom also, when you want to ask a question, how many of you have really, you know, grab the non-verbal attention, then communicate. We hardly have done that as students, we hardly would have done that. But if you start practicing this, that's a very uh, you know, a welcomed gesture of your proper communication. First of all, you have to grab the person's attention, then you can interrupt. There are many who don't like you interrupting them. When you are asking a doubt, when teacher is telling you something, teacher might abruptly say, shut up, right? You would have experienced this in your classrooms because there are some people, when you interrupt their session, their flow of presentation will, go, will be gone for a toss. All right, people also will be saying, let, let me complete, let me complete. Don't interrupt me right now. You have heard people around you? First listen. They always stress this, first listen. So don't interrupt me. So this interruption definitely will adversely, you know, uh, contribute for communication skills. Examine your body language. Body language is one of the non-verbal communication. It is very, very, important and impacting. You doing this is again a body language, a non-verbal body language and responding appropriately. All right, so your body language also talks about how much you are focused, how much you are opening up your hands while communicating, how have you uh, been in the classroom? Have you crossed your legs or not crossed your legs? Are you shaking your legs consistently? All these things contribute for effective listening skills. And let me just tell you, you would have heard people talking by closing their arms like this, crossing the arms. You just get an experience, you just go back and try, try closing your arms, everyone. Try crossing your arms like this. And just tell me when you would have spoken to someone with this gesture, anyone want to you know, volunteer? by closing the arms like this, when have you communicated this? Look boss, don't tell me anything. I know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm not able to listen to you. I don't want to listen to you. In this situation, you cross your arms like this. 
I listen, I don't care for English. All right? But when you really want to listen to someone, please tell me no, what happened. Your, your hand and your gesture comes very out. All right? So these things definitely contribute for effective body language. <coughs> and to choose the best method of communication, first of all, visual communications, which would include charts, maps, images, and graphs. One of the reason why people use uh, PPT, PowerPoint presentations for effective uh, learning, teaching procedures, without a proper communication, people don't understand anything. To support the communication, these presentations are the aids for effective communication. So for this reason, using the PPT along with how we present the topic for our discussion would actually have a, uh, you know, a positive impact on the listeners. For that, visual charts, visual communication is what you're trying to see the PPT on screen. Auditory communication is what you're listening, what I'm speaking right now. All right. But in addition to this, when I ask you to do something, okay, just now you did the crossing the arms, that is getting your own experience. So there are different kinds of communication. So the best method of communication should include visual communications, which would include the charts, appropriate images, graphs, whatever you want to communicate. Verbal communication for effective communication for effective success. Okay, you would have heard people when, say for example, how many of you, uh, you people who have experienced uh, buying an insurance policy from your known people, they first will say, sir, I want to come and meet you. It's very rare, people talk to you over the phone, sir, I'm selling an insurance, you buy uh, this insurance policy, pay me uh, 3,000 rupees uh, EMI or policy uh, premium. Nobody does this. They come, they sit with you, they sit with you face to face, they get all the information, the same thing they can also do on, on the phone, on the internet chatting these days, right? Why is it they won't do it? Because they want a effective communication. Okay, the purpose of meeting you is to convince you for taking a policy to buying their product. You talk about any salesman, they first come to you. They first talk to you face to face. All right, so the face to face communication is hence very, very, one of the very, very important uh, best practices of communication and wherever possible is face-to-face -face, or at least by phone or by any other such kind of online interactions. Next, non-verbal communication through body language, eye contact and gestures, okay? So you definitely have to communicate. So for this, people might use different modes of communication, which includes wherever it is required, okay? These communications are to be established. In the classroom, you definitely have to be face-to-face, uh, -face, no doubt. The, as a presenter's point of view, as a receiver's point of view, I'm talking about both in this slide, actually. When I say best method of communication, it includes, in some situations, a transmitter's point of view. In some cases, it is a receiver's point of view. Written communication through letters, emails, books, magazines, and internet. So whatever you write and communicate, that is having more clarity than what you speak. That is why in legal sense, look boss, what are you want to communicate? Send me a letter, send me an email. Why do they say so? In spite of you telling them, okay, I'll do this, I'll do this on the phone call. In spite of that, they want you to send a communication. When you go to the principal after doing some mischief, okay, you will say, sorry, sir, I won't do this next time. But what would principal insist for? Give me a letter, isn't it? In the letter, what you will say, sir, this time you please excuse me, next time I won't do this. You'd have said this 100 times before the principal, but still, principal wants you to write a letter. So that is the effective mode of communication, which also talks about your commitment. All right. Yes. What are the things which you should be practicing is to have a smile for an effective communication. Even the other person is trying to scold you, being abusive, whatever. It all depends on how much you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, contribute from your side for such, uh, you know, triggering the other person. Okay, if another person is bad according to you, okay, what is your duty to cut short that particular situation or the communication is left to you. But however, for a prospective communication, 
there's nothing which stops you from having a smile on your face. That is the first essential factor. That is why you you you'd have known, you'd have seen the uh, big big corporates, big big sales, uh, you know, uh, outlets, star hotels. The moment you go to the counter, what they do first? Smile. Hello, sir. Why? They are welcoming you with a smile. That smile makes you talk to them. If you go to someone and that person is so just like a robot, do you feel like going and talking to the person? No. Smile is the first thing for effective communication. And keep your arms uncrossed. If you want to really have an effective communication, you cannot talk to a person who is like this. If the person is like this, take it for granted. Other person is not being convinced about your statement. It's only when the arms are not crossed. The person is open for the communication. In the business uh, communications or your college level communications, uh, uh, hierarchy communications, how many of you can go to the principal and talk to the principal like this? Large padega. You know, first, first, learn how to talk. That's what they teach you, isn't it? So, crossing this arm has two meanings. One is superiority, one is also inferiority. So, you see slaves who come and stand in front of the owners with arms crossed and you no know, bowing their head. Arms crossed and bowing the head is a submissive. But arms crossed and chests open is offensive or defensive. It's a kind of defensive gesture, which I don't care about the person. I don't really listen. I don't want to really listen to you at all. That is the uh, meaning of the person who is just like this. And this happens with superiority also. People who are in top positions, they don't have to listen to anyone. Their orders, their decisions are final. Look, I want this to be done tomorrow. End of it. They are the ones who can do this. So they, they are not expecting a communication back to them. That's an order. All right. So next is to maintain an erect posture, a proper gesture. Okay. And it depends on the team or the people whom you are around. So most of us knows how to be in front of our parents. Most of us knows how to be in front of our grandparents. Most of us knows how to be with your friends. But sometimes, often, people try to, you know, uh, 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 practice the culture of being with friends with the family members. You don't go and shake hands with your family elders, isn't it? You go take the blessings, right? For, for your friends, shake hand, hug them. Do you go and hug your parents just like the way you hug your friends? No. So that maintain correct posture is applicable for any communication. Whatever it demands for that situation is what you're supposed to be having it. And people going to the court and crossing their legs, court will penalize them for contempt of court. Crossing the legs is deemed to be a disrespect gesture. So like that, maintain a proper gesture is what one of the key elements for proper communication. Maintaining eye contact to that extent which is required. Okay, uh, for all practical reasons and for cultural reasons. One cannot maintain continuous eye contact, and it depends on the other person or about their designation, about their hierarchy in the family or in the business uh, of how much you're going to maintain eye contact, but you must do whatever it takes, whatever it has to be of the given situation. Very, very important advice for this generation, people, is to keep your devices away. Very, very important. Why? Because if somebody is talking to you and when you are busy on your gadget, that means you are giving more importance to your gadget than the person sitting in front of you. All right. So when you go to any showroom, when you go to uh, typically uh, any five star, seven star hotels, for example, or uh, big, big cultures of the place, uh, 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 corporate cultures, when the customer relationship, when, when it comes to customer relationship issues, the customer executives, customer relationship executives are instructed to keep their personal devices away. They cannot take the calls when they're talking to you. All right. So why? It's because you are more important to that particular executive than their 
personal calls. Even if they had to take that, they would ask your permission, sir, can I take this call, please? It's very important, can I take this call? So such things you have to learn from interacting with different category of people. But with all said and done, to keep your devices away, and when I'm talking to you, when you're maintaining your eye contact with me, there's nothing which is distracting you, all right? Suppose if I'm talking to you, if you're looking at my computer, that is a bad practice. That means you don't care about me, but you only care about my computer. When I'm talking to you, looking at your mobile phone, I care about my mobile phone, but not about you. This is what it means. Whether you knowingly do it, unknowingly do it, nobody cares. The action has an equal and opposite reaction. I understand that you are not aligned to my communication. That is what, as a transmitter's point of view, I get a feeling. Whether you really meant that, that is up to you. But it actually means that. So with this uh, key points, uh, I, I'm very confident that you can definitely uh, practice interpersonal and intrapersonal relationships. And when this context, uh, these concepts are effectively adopted in your everyday life, trust me, India will not be the diverse capital of the world. Okay, well, while I'm telling this, it, it also has a meaning. Probably so far, I only give the uh, business perspective or the work culture perspective of the uh, communication. But if such communication is established within the families, within the uh, husband, spouse, for that matter, there is no, or there, there could be very less scope or misunderstanding. While Madam also said before this, uh, three people occupying in three different rooms and having their own individual mobile phones. That means they care about their mobile phones and their communication with the outer world than the, the family members is what that means. So keep your devices away is what the solution for that is. So however, with this, uh, I'm uh, concluding uh, my presentation uh, as, as a first instance. Session is now open for any discussions and queries. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, yeah, there are certain, uh, I, let me just have a look on the chat box if there are certain questions. So there's one question from uh, Micah. I have a challenge of eye contact. I quickly feel pity to the person and uh, end not expressing my views the way I plan. When I mentioned different, uh, uh, you know, ads has different meaning. Probably the one who asked this question could be, could be, I'm talking could be because I haven't interacted with the person. I don't know about this person. With the background the person gave me, I understand this person could be an emotional person. And you are such person who don't care for realistic figures, but you get carried away by the stories and emotions of the other person. So it's not your fault, but what is important is that when you now understand what kind of person you are, you will be cautious in now dealing with different people and you would at least try to get some logical sense before you decide something. That's what I had to answer. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I request participants, if you have any question, you can raise your hand, we'll allow you to, uh, yes. Sir. And, and just, just, just to uh, give a underlying statement about this topic, be a leader, not a boss, okay? I would like to just clarify, in, see, uh, apart from whatever I have added in my uh, discussion, the leadership and being a boss, many do not understand that these two are extreme, two extreme designations. Mahatma Gandhi was a great leader. Hitler was a great leader, okay? Today, you would have heard about Swami Nityananda. All right, he's a great leader. A leader is the one who actually, by his actions, makes people to follow him. Mahatma Gandhi did not have a campaign. Come everyone, let's do this Satyagraha, do this, do that. He started doing it. People started following them because of their action. But a boss is the one who gives the command. You are supposed to be following me from my office to from my home. This is an order. You are supposed to be following me. You are, you are supposed to be following my orders. 
you are supposed to be working late night today. But a leader, when they say, when they, their work actually impacts the listener. Okay, for a leader, he might only end up saying that, look, I have work without completing this work today, I cannot go home. If he starts doing it, probably his staff joins, sir, we also want to complete the work today along with you, we'll do that. But a boss, look, today there's some extra work, stay back, work. That is, a boss is the one who has a designation, who has been given the power uh, by the designation. But leader is the one who has the power without being given. He can definitely influence many people, not by his designation, but by his action. But a boss is the one who had who makes people to follow. He forces people to follow because he, he has a designation. He might not have the leadership qualities. So when you have effective communication, people love you for the communication. You would definitely have people around you, faculties around you. You have some favorite faculties and some non-favorite faculties. Why? Because of the way they deal with you. Because of the way they communicate with you, okay? This is the same reason why you love some people and you don't love some people, especially the faculties. Okay, so that actually, uh, uh, it, with, with all the skills I discussed about how you should communicate, how you should receive the communication, if that practices is done by every such person, probably every student will love all the faculties. So it is not to blame anyone. It is a realistic fact that not everyone would have attended sessions like this. And if anybody attends sessions like this, at least they get a time to think what they should prepare before they communicate. So if you have not spent time, you know, in spending you know, the time for learning about these concepts, it's high time that you have to add on some skills for your better communication. Yes.